What if I told you this was once a sea of sand, and that the secret to changing it wasn't machines or billions of dollars, but rabbits? Yes, 1.2 million rabbits. When most of us think of deserts, we imagine endless yellow sand, scorching sun, and land so hostile that life barely clings on. Now picture that same wasteland, and then picture it turning green, bursting with plants, and even supporting thriving communities. That's exactly what happened in China's Dalad Banner Desert, where something extraordinary unfolded. The idea sounds almost unbelievable. How could rabbits, of all creatures, transform a desert into an oasis? But what happened here is not just a quirky experiment. It's a story of science, persistence, and the surprising power of nature itself. This is the story of how one of Earth's harshest landscapes found new life, with the help of millions of rabbits. But before we dive into how rabbits pulled off this miracle, we need to understand why deserts are such a big deal in the first place, and why fighting them matters to all of us. Deserts aren't just empty land. When they expand, they swallow up farmland, push families out of their homes, and create massive dust storms that can travel thousands of miles. In northern China, this has been a decades-long struggle. By the 1990s, Reports showed that nearly 1.7 million square kilometers of land in China had already been lost to desertification. That's an area bigger than Alaska. And every single year, more than 10,000 square kilometers of land was being claimed by sand. This isn't just a local problem. Dust from China's deserts doesn't stay in China. It rides the wind across Asia, reaching South Korea, Japan, and even the west coast of North America. Think of it like a slow-moving chain reaction as more farmland disappears, Food security is threatened, villages shrink, and entire regions face economic collapse. By 2015, desertified land in China had grown to about 2.6 million square kilometers, nearly one-third of the country's territory. Imagine if one out of every three acres in the United States suddenly became unusable. The ripple effects would be devastating. This is the backdrop against which China had to act. And instead of giving up on the sand, scientists and entrepreneurs asked a radical question. What if the desert itself could be turned into an opportunity? And out of this crisis came an unusual idea, one that challenged conventional wisdom about how to fight deserts. For years, the common solution to desertification was simple. Plant trees, build windbreaks, and hope they survive. But one of China's most respected scientists, Qian Zhuesen, argued that this wasn't enough. He believed deserts couldn't be tamed by trees alone, they needed an entire system that combined forestry, farming, and animal husbandry. In other words, you don't just plant trees and walk away. You build a living, breathing economy that keeps the land alive. This idea caught the attention of entrepreneurs. To them, the desert wasn't just dead land. It was untapped potential. They began investing millions to test whether Qian's theory could be turned into a real, functioning industry. One project alone put forward 750 million yuan, that's over 100 million U.S. dollars, to create a Salix tree base across 300,000 acres with plans to green millions more around it. It was bold, risky, and unlike anything tried before. But the thinking was clear. If you could combine the survival power of plants with the productivity of animals, the desert might not just stop spreading. It could actually support life and business. And that's when researchers began looking for the perfect animal partner for this experiment. The answer turned out to be surprisingly fluffy. So what animal could possibly survive in the desert, help plants grow, and still provide value to local communities? The answer came from France, a special kind of rabbit. Meet the Rex rabbit, or as some call it, the Rex hare. Originally bred in France about a century ago, this rabbit was famous for its velvety fur, which became a luxury material for coats and clothing. But in China's desert, the Rex rabbit found a completely different role, not as fashion, but as a force of nature. Why this rabbit? Unlike many breeds, Rex rabbits prefer dry, clean environments. That makes the desert, which seems unlivable to most animals, surprisingly comfortable for them. They're also natural diggers. With their strong paws, they burrow into the ground, loosening up hard-packed soil. That small action creates big changes because it lets air and water seep into the sand, turning dead ground into soil that plants can actually use. And then there's the most important trait of all, their ability to multiply. A single female Rex can have up to 40 baby rabbits a year. That's 10 times the rate of goats or sheep. 
So once introduced into the desert, their numbers grew quickly, providing not just an ecological service, but also a renewable source of meat and fur for local communities. So, an animal once bred for high fashion in Europe had now been repurposed as a desert warrior in China. But how exactly do these rabbits change sand into soil? To understand the real magic, we need to look closely at what the rabbits do in the desert and why their everyday habits ended up transforming the land itself. So how does a rabbit, a small fluffy creature, manage to reshape a desert? The secret lies in its daily habits. First, rabbits are natural diggers. As they burrow for roots and shelter, they churn up the soil. This works like nature's version of plowing a field. The compact desert sand, usually too hard for seeds to penetrate, becomes loosened and aerated, allowing air and moisture to sink in. Second, their diet creates a feedback loop. Rex rabbits love grass roots, leaves, and soft plants, but they can't digest hard-shelled seeds. Those seeds pass through their system and land back in the soil, now mixed with fertilizer their droppings. It's like each rabbit is a tiny farmer, planting seeds as it goes about its day. Over time, this constant digging, seeding, and fertilizing transforms patches of sand into fertile ground. Plants begin to sprout where they couldn't before, and once greenery takes hold, it slows down wind erosion and traps more moisture. The desert, little by little, starts to hold life. It's a small action repeated millions of times, and together it creates a massive ecological shift. And once the results became visible, China scaled up fast, turning a handful of rabbits into more than a million. At first, the rabbit experiment was small, just a handful of test plots in Dalad Banner. But when scientists saw patches of green sticking to the sand instead of blowing away, they realized they had stumbled onto something bigger. So they scaled up. Pilot farms expanded into rabbit ranches, and soon trucks were rolling in with cages of Rex rabbits. Numbers climbed fast, from a few thousand to hundreds of thousands, and eventually reports say over 1.2 million rabbits were involved in the program. But managing that many animals in the desert isn't as simple as dropping them into the sand. It required careful logistics. Fences were built to protect both rabbits and new plantings. Wells and irrigation points supplied drinking water. Veterinary teams checked for disease outbreaks, and workers rotated shifts to feed, monitor, and move the animals. It wasn't just an ecological experiment anymore. It was becoming a full-scale industry. Imagine rows of pens stretching along the desert's edge, with workers treating rabbits almost like livestock in a high-tech farm. The desert was turning into a production zone, not just for plants, but for a whole new ecosystem. But rabbits weren't working alone. Their success depended on an unlikely ally, a humble desert plant with roots strong enough to hold the sand in place. While rabbits were the movers and shakers, the real foundation of desert recovery came from plants, especially salix, a type of willow shrub. Salix is tough. Its roots dig deep into sandy soil, holding it together like invisible netting. Without it, the rabbits digging would just churn up dust. But with salix, the sand stayed anchored, creating pockets where moisture could linger. Even better, salix doubled as food. Rabbits nibbled on its leaves and stems, and their droppings fertilized the soil around the roots. That meant each plant became both a food source and a seedbed. Scientists planted rows of salix across shifting dunes like fences made of green. Over time, these shrubs created microclimates, small shaded zones where other grasses and seedlings could take hold. What started as bare sand slowly turned into living corridors of vegetation. It was a true partnership. Plants stabilized the land, rabbits accelerated growth, and together they made survival possible in one of the harshest places on Earth. And soon, the results were undeniable. Plants weren't just surviving, they were thriving at rates no one thought possible. The desert doesn't forgive mistakes, but this time, the gamble paid off. Within just a few growing seasons, the numbers told the story. Reported survival rates of new plantings soared to nearly 96%, compared to the usual struggles where more than half of seedlings would wither and die. Green corridors stitched across dunes that had been nothing but shifting sand for centuries. Satellite imagery confirmed what locals already saw with their own eyes. Patches of vegetation expanding year after year, connecting into oases that held the ground firm against the wind. Where dust storms once choked nearby towns, grass and shrubs now acted like a living shield. Even the soil itself began to change. Samples showed richer organic matter, better water retention, and healthier microbes, all signs of a system rebooting itself. 
For the first time in decades, Dalad Banner wasn't losing land to desertification. It was clawing land back. What started with a handful of rabbits and shrubs was now shaping the very landscape and giving hope that deserts could be reversed, not just resisted. But the real miracle wasn't just ecological. It was human. As the desert turned green, so did the fortunes of the people who lived there. For local families, the desert's transformation wasn't just about plants and rabbits. It was about survival, dignity, and opportunity. Before the project, many residents of Dalad Banner faced poverty. Farmland was shrinking, dust storms wrecked harvests, and young people left in search of work. But as the green belts expanded, so did incomes. Rabbits became a steady source of meat and fur, creating a market that linked desert villages to cities hundreds of kilometers away. Families who once struggled to buy food could now sell pelts, meat, and even rabbit-based products. Reports say that some households reached average annual incomes of nearly 20,000 U.S. dollars, a figure unthinkable in a region that used to rely on subsistence farming. And then came something nobody expected, tourism. Visitors began arriving to see the miracle desert oasis. Entrepreneurs opened eco-lodges, camel ride services, and guided tours through the green corridors. Young people who might have left found jobs as guides, hospitality workers, or sellers of local crafts. It wasn't just land that was being reclaimed. It was livelihoods. The desert was no longer a place to escape from. It had become a place worth staying in and even visiting. But how exactly did it all fit together? The answer lies in the value chain, a loop where every part of the system fed the next. Behind the desert miracle was a simple but powerful design, everything connected in a closed loop. It started with breeding farms, where rex rabbits were raised and multiplied. These rabbits fed on salic shrubs and desert grasses planted specifically for them. In turn, their digging and droppings nourished the soil, keeping the plants alive. From there, the chain branched out. Meat and fur went to processing facilities where they became market products sold in towns and cities. The rabbit's presence also supported industries like feed production, veterinary care, and transport. But the system didn't stop with agriculture. The green landscapes created by this cycle sparked tourism, which added an entirely new revenue stream. Families who weren't raising rabbits could still benefit by running guest houses, offering camel rides, or selling local crafts to visitors. Think of it like a wheel. Rabbits were the hub, and every spoke, plants, products, services, tourism, spun outward, driving a whole new desert economy. Nothing went to waste. Every link reinforced the others. This wasn't just ecology anymore. It was ecology plus economy working in sync. But no miracle is perfect. And this project raised tough questions about disease risks, animal welfare, and whether nature can really be engineered at such a scale. Every bold experiment comes with shadows, and China's Desert Rabbit Project is no exception. The first concern is disease. Rabbits reproduce quickly, but that same density can make them vulnerable to outbreaks like rabbit hemorrhagic disease. Without strict veterinary monitoring, an epidemic could wipe out thousands in just a few weeks. Another risk is ecological balance. Rabbits are famous for overrunning environments. Just look at Australia's rabbit problem, where imported species devastated farmland. Critics worried, what if the rex rabbits escaped management and became an invasive force in China's fragile desert ecology? Then there's animal welfare. Breeding millions of animals in semi-industrial systems raises questions about living conditions, health, and humane treatment. Supporters argue standards are enforced, but animal rights groups warn that scale often comes at a cost. Finally, there's the monoculture trap, depending too heavily on one species or one model. If markets for rabbit meat or fur collapsed, or if climate shock struck, local economies might struggle without backup industries. Still, China's approach tried to learn from global lessons, biosecurity zones, diversified income streams, and continuous monitoring. The takeaway is clear. This project is promising, but it's not a magic wand. Desert control requires vigilance as well as vision. And that's where modern technology comes in. Drones, big data, and innovation centers are making sure this desert miracle doesn't just survive, but scales up. What once started as a local experiment has now become a high-tech operation. Modern tools are the backbone of keeping this desert transformation on track. Drones fly overhead, mapping vegetation growth in real time. Instead of guessing where plants are thriving or failing, farmers can see detailed maps on tablets. 
pinpointing weak zones that need more care. Big data systems crunch this information, tracking soil moisture, plant survival rates, and even the health of rabbit populations. With these analytics, managers can predict problems before they spread, like water shortages or disease outbreaks. China has also set up the Belt and Road Desert Green Economic Innovation Center, a hub where scientists, entrepreneurs, and farmers share strategies. It's not just about China anymore. The center explores how similar models could work in Africa, the Middle East, or Central Asia, where deserts cover vast areas. This tech-driven scaling makes the project less fragile and more adaptable. It's no longer a story about a handful of farms in Inner Mongolia. It's becoming a blueprint for how deserts worldwide could be managed turning wastelands into engines of growth. And that brings us to the big picture. What does this all mean for the future? And what can we learn from a million rabbits rewriting the story of a desert? So what's the lesson of Dalit Banner? It's that even the harshest landscapes aren't fixed in destiny. With creativity, science, and yes, a few million rabbits, deserts can be rewritten into oases. This project shows a bigger truth. Solving ecological crises doesn't always require massive machines or endless funding. Sometimes it's about finding the right balance between nature and economy, between local livelihoods and global sustainability. Today, desert land that once swallowed villages now sustains families earning steady incomes. What was once lifeless sand now hums with greenery, wildlife, and tourism. And the story isn't finished. By 2025, the number of desert-raised rabbits is expected to exceed 1.8 million, making the experiment larger than ever. But perhaps the most inspiring part is this. If one unlikely partnership between French Rex rabbits and Chinese innovation can flip the script of a desert, what other surprises are waiting out there? What overlooked solutions could transform our toughest challenges? From sand to salaries, from waste to wealth, this is more than a story of rabbits. It's a story of possibility. If a rabbit can help heal a desert, imagine what we could do together. Subscribe to follow more stories of the world's most unexpected solutions.